listening audience, um, I'm sorry if I didn't, um, if you all keyed in and I didn't introduce. I thank you so much for being with us this morning. God bless you, each and every one of you being with us. You know, one of the things that I think uh, that in this COVID moment and in this time, we've been doing this now since March, um, that we have been in COVID, we've been in social distancing, and we've been through all of this. There's one thing that, that, that we can find out that can happen. You know, the word, I, I was able to preach the word right there in my little studio at home, and it's no problem. I'm able to do a lot of things there and get messages around the world. But one of the things you can't phone in, it's kind of like the doctor. You know, I was, I was saying something, you know, when you, you all know that Wanda had cancer 20 years ago. And it was amazing. As soon as she, she went through this procedure that cost a lot of money, and, and they found this tumor. But, but the doctor, the surgeon, simply did like this and looked at the bottom of her eye and said, how come someone didn't catch this? It was white as snow. If you want to know if you're sick or not, just in the morning in the mirror, just do like this. If you don't see pink, you better go to the doctor and check yourself out. Internal bleeding is happening. See, there's some, some stuff you can't phone in. Some stuff you got to be there. Worship is that. You, we, we can't teleconference worship. It don't work that way. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of the brethren. And I tell you, it's something when we come in here together, it makes no difference if there's a band up here. I don't need no band. I did this at home. I was crying out to God. I'm still desperate after all these years. Huh. I can sing by myself, but I'm telling you, you cannot barbecue with one coal. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need us to, to, to create a fire that, 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 that creates the atmosphere of worship. That is what we need. Amen? That is what we need. Are we doing children's church? Is it happening? Children, I need y'all to exit stage left. You're right. Go that way. Young people, God bless you. Thank you so much. You know, our young people really want to go to their children's church. Uh, I mean, I had one, one child said, now, when are we going to have children's church? Now, I get all y'all, what y'all doing up in here? <laughs> but we're, when are we going to do what we do? <laughs> I thank God for our young people. Amen. The church of today, not tomorrow, the church of today. Grab your Bibles real quickly as we declare how we will receive the word today. Come on, grab the Bible, grab the Bible. Grab the Bible. Say, this is my Bible. It is God's holy word. Come on, say it like you, I know you're masked up and everything, but say, this is my Bible. It is God's holy word. Jesus said that it's spirit and it is life. Therefore, I cannot receive this word with my natural mind or my carnal intellect. Jesus, sow this word into my spirit, I shall and I will receive it. You can have a seat in the presence of God. Father, we thank you again for another opportunity, God, to preach your word. And I thank you, God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, which you think through my mind, speak through my lips, the very oracles of the living God. Listen, I know that, um, that God wants us to come into truth and to do it. Uh, one of the things that we have to do, one, is we've got to get a revelation. Above everything that you do, I think in, in, in life, if you're going to achieve and you're going to learn, no matter what it is, you're going to be a mechanic, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a dentist, or whatever you're going to do, uh, you're going to be uh, uh, um, a baker, I don't care, a candlestick maker. You need to get a revelation. You need to get a revelation. And number two, you need to have what I call a role model. I think you need to have somebody to help you. I guarantee you, a lot of people would have achieved their potential if they had somebody to coach them, if they had somebody to mentor them. They had some, you know, too much. The, 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 I think one of the most tragic scriptures in the Bible is in Kings. I think it's around Kings, Second Kings, or Second, I think it's Second Kings chapter 13. Uh, and, and it's where... It's, 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 it's where Elisha was about to die, and, 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 he, he, and he, 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 he does die, and then they bury him, and a band of raiders from Moab, they, they take a one of uh, their dead bodies, and they put into the grave of Elisha, 
and the man comes to life. You know why? Because Elisha took his anointing to the grave. I, I guarantee you there's a lot of people that live their life and they say to themselves, oh, man, I, they get to the end of their life and they're sitting uh, at death's door and want to know, did they really do what God called them to do? You know, that, that, that would be one thing that would be really disappointing is for me to have done all the things that we've done, but it was not what God wanted me to do. And, 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 and there is something about people say, I'm burned out. But I'm going to tell you something. There is something about, I understand Caleb. Caleb says, listen, I feel as young as I did when I got that assignment. And he was 85 years old. He was old, he said, but I feel as young as I used to. At some point, you got to understand that if you're doing the will of God, you're, you're going downstream and you're not swimming upstream that you're not going against the current, you're going with the flow. And you're in the grace of God. And so you got to have a role model. Next, I think you got to have faith. I think without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I believe you have to have a regimen of faith where you practice faith and you keep practicing faith and 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 practicing faith. And And the more you practice faith, the more you become to be faithful. Right now, there are people who are losing faith. They're losing hope. And, and they're thinking, well, hold up here. What are the promises of God? We're going through our readings now, going through the Bible. And did you notice in the book of Genesis, did you notice what God told Abraham? God told him. He told him before it even happened. He said, man, 400 years y'all going to be in this. He said, but listen, I made a promise to you that you will be the father of many nations. And here we are still talking about Father Abraham. Come on now. You know, let's, listen, he says, listen, these things are going to happen, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a savior. Not one, but two. I'm going to send you one that's a type of Christ. You know, the Old Testament is concealed, but the New Testament is revealed. So here comes Joseph. You thought you killed him and threw him in a hole because you didn't like him. Come on here. They're trying to throw us in a hole because they don't like us. They don't like what we got to say. Come on. They don't like because I'm favored and highly favored of God. They don't like me because daddy likes me. Come on here. You want to call me, all me out my name. You want to throw me in a hole, leave me for dead. But what God, what the devil meant for evil. God meant it for my good. So I got faith enough to know what God told me is going to come to pass. Come on here. I don't care if it's about my health, my family, my promotion, my money. Come on here. My, I don't care if it's about my husband, my wife, my children, what you said to me before the foundation of the earth. Do you know God is not surprised? Can you say that out loud? You at your seat now. You can take your mask off. You can, you can unmask yourself. Is that the show, The Unmasker? I've never seen it, but... Yeah, unmask the singer. Let me see you. <laughs> unmask the worshiper in the house. Lord, have mercy. You know, I, you know I, I really believe that we need to walk by faith and not by sight. And then lastly, I think if we would have a resolve that is righteous and we would be like a pit bull. Man, I'm telling you, sometimes have you ever played with a dog, particularly a pit bull or one of them kind of dogs, and once they clamp down, they better know you playing because they ain't going to let go. That's what we need. We need some tenacious people who grab hold to a promise of God, who know what God said concerning their life, concerning their situation, and they don't waddle in the middle of it, but they see the end of the thing. You know, we've been talking about um, uh, Amos for some time at We've been talking about a famine of the word for hearing the word of God. But we want to move now. Uh, we want to move now to uh, looking at the spirit of the Antichrist. I, 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 I know that uh, throughout the years, many of you, who read and study the word of God, have surely asked the question about the Antichrist. And I want to take some time to talk about the Antichrist. If you would, turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter number 2, verse 18. Listen, guys, I want to, you know, when you drove in on the property today, I know you saw that construction. 
you saw that earth moving just for a little. I'm telling you, when I saw uh, the, 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 the fiber optic cable that's coming into this building, I'm looking for, I was talking to Bishop Kunji, and I'm looking for a roll, uh, a roll I mean a, a pipe that is big as this. Do you know the pipe that they put it in is smaller than the stick on these flags? <laughs> that's, the, that's the pipe that the fiber optic goes into. I'm talking about, that's ingenious, man. But whatever is coming in here, we're going to be flying now. I'm going to tell you, we're going to be flying out of here. Huh? There ain't going to be no more blipping and dropping frames. And huh? that, that 4K camera is going to be working real smooth when, that, when it gets some power. Lord, have mercy. And I just thank God for it. I thank God for it. I don't even know if I should even say what, what it costs online. That might, might get me in trouble. I might wait till we on pause to do that. Mm, but I can't. You know how Jesus, when he told the people, he healed them and he said, look, don't go tell nobody. Man, we planning to pay almost $10,000, 15000 They said free. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. I don't give nothing free in Germany. You can't even get ketchup at McDonald's without paying. Can't even get a bag at a grocery store. Germans ain't giving you nothing, baby. Somebody shout the favor and the grace of God. Y'all better talk back to me this morning. I feel Jesus up in here. Come on here. Come on here. Come on here. Man, in the midst of COVID, there's been a lot of stuff going on. But I guarantee you, if you got a regiment of faith and a righteous resolve, that thing is going to come through. It says, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, somebody say, even now. Say it out loud. Even now, many antichrists have come by which we have, by which we know that it is the last hour. We've talked about the antichrist. You've talked about it. You've had Bible studies, not, you know, maybe studies or just talks and just wondering in your house about the antichrist and who they will be and who he will be. You might ask the question, is he here? Do we uh, know his identity? Saints of God, we know that perilous times are among us. There's no question about it. We have a global pandemic. Uh, we got lockdowns in, in countries. My spiritual father died. They, they laid him to rest this week, last week. I couldn't even get on a plane to go see him. I couldn't even leave the country to go pay my last respects. I had to do it by a video. Unprecedented political tension and strife, depression, drug abuse, suicide, divorce is on the rise, terrorist attacks here in Europe, in East, in the Middle East, and in Africa. Right has become wrong, and wrong has been routinely uh, heralded as right. Riots in the street, racial unrest, a lying and an irresponsible media, a loss of trust in our institutions, and moreover, the church is taking her lead from the world. In the words of Marvin Gaye, that great prophet, what's going on? What's going on? Let's look at the text again. First John 2.18, it says, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. He gives us a warning. Little children, you've heard, I've told you, 
the Apostle John is saying, I told you, you heard that Antichrist shall come. Then he says, even now. This was, this was written, and it was from a case, an account 2,000 years ago. Hear this now. He says, even now, the Antichrist is right here. I, I'm, I'm going to share something with you this morning that's going to make you understand something and, 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 and lift your antennas. Watch now. He says, even now, there are many, watch now, Antichrist with an S. He said, even now, there are many Antichrists. What's, here's, the, here's what the church has got hooked up in. We've got caught looking for a man. Watch now. John. The, the Apostle John here is talking about agnostics or the teaching of agnosticism. He's talking about the agnostics. What did the agnostics believe? They believed in, um, they, 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 they had a, they had, their beliefs strongly clashed with the Christian doctrine and faith. Uh, they, they believed in dualism. They, they believed that the world was divided into a physical and a spiritual realm. And, 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 and the created and the material world uh, matter is evil. And therefore, in opposition to the world is the spirit. And, 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 and the only thing that is good is the spirit. And so... They did not believe uh, in things created as being anything considered good. And they didn't believe in the bodily resurrection, the bodily form of God and having a physical relationship with God. God desires that we have relationship with human beings but they did not believe in that. Agnostics claim hidden knowledge, noxtos, knowledge. They felt that knowledge was, would bring about the salvation that they needed. Uh, they were not so keen on things that were physical, like the bodily resurrection of Christ and but you know what's interesting? John calls this teaching the spirit of the Antichrist. Look at verse 19. In 19, I don't want to go through it all, but I'm just going to read the first part of it. I'm paraphrasing it. It says, and they came out from among us. Now, 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 now hold up here. Look at me now. But don't, don't get so fixated on the Bible quick. Look, look, it's in there. It'll be there when you get home. But, uh, but I won't be at your home when you get there. But, but, but would you look at me just for a minute? Don't be looking all over the place for the Antichrist. Just look around the room. <laughs> the Bible says they are coming from amongst us. They started with us. Huh? And then they got another spirit. Bishop, what are you talking about? I'm just preaching the Bible. One who... Stays in, stands in the place of, is anti. The identity of the Antichrist has gotten far too much more billing than I think it should. More billing than the spirit of the Antichrist. Saints of God, we focus much on the man, the Antichrist, and we ignore the spirit. Of the Antichrist. See, the spirit is very present, matter of fact, prevalent, because he said it was prevalent 2,000 years ago. I, 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 anytime you have a religious or a Christian gathering, not a religious gathering, a Christian gathering, there's evidently somebody that's got the spirit against God. Now, y'all want to call him what you want to call him. Uh, I like how Jesus handled it when he was dealing with the apostle. He said, get behind me, Satan. 
<laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to call it like it is. Sometimes you got to say it like it is. There is a spirit that exists, and it's the spirit of the Antichrist. You know, I'm not going to debate eschatology this morning. I'm not trying to deal with that this morning. You know, there is a lot today that looks like Jesus, sounds like Jesus, but it ain't Jesus. Hmm? Looks like Jesus, acts like Jesus. Do you know, do you know that you can go to churches and never even see a symbol of a cross anymore? Huh? Do you, how many times you had a conversation with somebody lately? Raise your hand if I'm talking, if I'm in the house today. I believe in God. They ain't, they, no, no. But when you start talking about Jesus, oh, boy, they do the Michael Jackson on you, baby. They, they moonwalk on you, baby. They, won't, they say, oh, no, 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 no. I believe in a higher power. Everybody believe in a God. But when you start talking about Jesus, that's the spirit right there of the Antichrist. See, here's the problem. Y'all, 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 some of y'all were raised by the Antichrist. Now y'all mad at me. Mm -hmm. Some of you were raised by the Antichrist. Your mama, your mama, your mom and dad and them, they, they were against God. See, the more you learn about the word of God, the more you learn about the word of God, the more Jesus' words come to mind to me. He said, you know what's going to make this word of no effect? Tradition. And where do you get tradition from? Family. Your tribe, huh, gets you in trouble. It's a lot of things you thought were right. You come to Germany, you meet a little bald head man, and now you're mad at everybody. You're crying. Can't, you know, you don't know if you like your mom and them anymore. You don't like your old pastor. No, 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 no. Revelation will bring you into truth. That's all that is. Come on, open up the eyes of my understanding that I might be enlightened. Come on. I mean, at some point, many of you all haven't been 50 miles away from your home till you came in the military. And now this is no lie. This is no joke. I'm not, I'm not embellishing this thought. I came here 45 years ago, and I remember going north in Germany once up near Brunnenhaven, and I guarantee you they thought we had tails. I was here in Germany when they thought black men had tails. I'm just... I'm just saying. I've been in Germany a long time. I've been in Germany a long time. I've been in Germany a long time. I love Germany. I love Germany. I was in Germany when the ladies would wave at you, man, and an afro would jump out from under their arms. I've been here a long time. <laughs> been here a long time. I've been here a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd just kind of put it out there like that. <laughs> uh, got a few Germans in here. I'm trying to back be pat on. They know I'm talking right. That's why they amen was soft right through there. They know what I'm talking about. Lord, how mercy. You could barely get on a bus because uh, 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 deodorant was not a thing they used around here 45 years ago. I'm hot, uh, so I've been around here a long time, so don't think my story is out of line. Huh? But when you get to know people and you get to meet people and you understand, hold up here, I was taught a lie. Huh? You, you, you learn all kind of things about people and stereotypes and, you know, everybody, huh? E everybody, you know, you just, don't, you know, everybody don't eat caviar. What are you talking about? You know, you, you know we, we make these stereotypes and we put people in groups because we don't know them and, 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 and when you learn of things, we're surprised. Look at what John continues to say in 1 John 4 and 1. Here's what he says, beloved. Do not believe every spirit. He said, don't believe every spirit. But test the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have come, have gone out into the world. He said, many false prophets have gone out into the world. Listen here, listen here, listen here. I would not trust me unless I had a Bible in my hand. I wouldn't trust no preacher. Give me chapter and verse about what you're talking about. You, at this point, you better, you better. And see, and here's where the problem comes. Is when I give you chapter and verse, you run up out of here getting mad at me. 
because it's in there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So I don't get offended because I've been doing this for 30 years. I'm not offended, huh? I'm not. This is not my first rodeo. I started out with my mother and father challenging them on what they said and how they would treat people and how they would say stuff. I said, oh, no, you didn't raise me that way. That ain't what the word of God says. Greater is he that's in me than he is in the world. I'm not going to let you talk about white people like that in front of me. No, sir, daddy, that's it. My, my wife was right there. I went off on him like he was a buck private. I, I was spitting in everything. I said, you better stop that language. Stop that talk. But see, at some point, you know, you got to have a righteous resolve because I know he was about ready to throw something at me, but I had to be ready. <laughs> to be ready, be ready, be ready. But he was like King Agrippa, boy. Tears rolled up in his eyes because he heard his son tell him truth that he'd not known because he was so caught in the forest he couldn't see the trees. I'm, am I talking to anybody here? When you hear truth, truth sometimes seems strange to you. Because you've had the spirit of another Christ. Oh, it's getting quiet in here. I didn't call nobody the Antichrist now. Don't, 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 don't leave out of here like that. That's why we record stuff around here. In other words, it may look like Jesus. It may even claim to be Jesus himself, but the spirit of Christ is not there. We're seeing that everywhere now. We have a version of Christianity being presented today that is Christless, that's bloodless, and therefore powerless. Has no power. There is no power anymore in the church. There, we are afraid. I've got preachers and pastors that they don't want to have worship like we have it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I, I pray in the Spirit. I, I, listen, I got friends that don't believe in it. That's fine. That's them. I, but I am not going to stop what I know is getting me where I'm going. Come on. I know what Jude said. Jude 20. It's in the Bible. It's always been there. It says, build yourself up on your most holy faith, faith praying our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Now, that ain't what it said. It says, build yourself on, upon your most holy faith. What? Praying in the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of anything about what the word is saying. But what we want is we want to draw a crowd. So if we draw a crowd, we start. Oh, folks, what's going on up in there? What are they doing? They sound like idiots. You can think I sound like an idiot, but I'm going to tell you right now, when I lay hands on the sick, they will recover. I, 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 you can talk about me all you want to, but I believe in the power of God. God said, I'm going to take the foolish things of the world to confine the wine. So you can laugh at me. I don't care. See, I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man walking. So I have no feelings about what you think. Come on here. I, I've been crucified. That's what that cross means. We got a lot of rappers putting crosses around their neck. I would suggest, one, see, you would never see anybody put an electric chair around their neck, would you? A gold electric chair. Yo, man, got all the chain and a gold. What's that, man? What you got a chain? What you going to do? You going to do time? That cross is a symbol of death, man. But people wear it like jewelry. Come on, baby. You should be dead to your old life, your old self. Oh, God, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm just saying, I'm just saying. It's the spirit of Antichrist. He's the adversary. The Greek word here is antidikos. It's a legal term. It, it is antidikos is a legal term. Uh, it's a person that, 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 that is coming against you uh, in the courtroom. One who stands against you. We know that he is the accuser of the brethren. We know that. The word reminds us that we need to rely on the anointing. See, 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 see. Can I say this to you? Uh, many people, uh, uh, can, this might be a newsflash for some of y'all. Please don't, don't, don't throw nothing at the stage and don't get mad at your mama and them. Jesus' uh, uh, last name is not Christ. That's not his last name. 
Y'all go around like Jesus Christ, like y'all talking about J. Allen Neal. No, Neal is my last name, but Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is the anointed one and his anointing. So, for someone to be anti-Christ, they're anti-anointing. Oh, come on here. You're anti-anointing. The anointing is what destroys the yokes. Come on here. Come on, come on, come on. It's the power of God. The anointing destroys the yokes. You want to know why church is powerless? Because it's bloodless, huh? Because where there is no blood, there is no remission of sin. And if it's bloodless, it's powerless because there's power in the blood. And when there is no power, there can never be no anointing in the place. God, the anointing destroys the yoke. Come on here. What yoke? Yo, what is what is at play here? Um, is oxen. You 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 take oxen and we're 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 in Sri Lanka, India, y'all. Y'all, y'all don't know nothing about this, but in third world countries in Africa, ah, they have these wooden yokes that they put around the oxen as they plow the field. And what is at view here is the 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 the, the anointing. The fatness is what it's called, too. <laughs> the fatness. See, you know, all preachers that got a fat neck, you know they anointed for sure. <laughs> got a little roll back there. <laughs> that means they anointed. Come on here. It's the fatness. Come on here. That destroys the yoke. And the yoke is that wooden thing around the oxen's necks, and it breaks it. Ah, God. The anointing destroys the yoke. If you have no anointing, you're going to keep plowing that field. You're not going to get no relief. I'm not talking to, I'm not talking to anybody. Antichrist, you're against the anointing. You're against healing. You're against miracles. You're against delivering. It denies the anointing. It preaches a feel-good message, but they ain't good. I'm tired of people wanting to, I feel good. But you're not good. I don't care about how it sounds. See, that's why I'm so glad I was raised by a man named Ed Neal, who used to whoop me and my brother for stuff he, we thought, we, he thought we were going to do. And I'm trying to reason with him. He didn't want to reason. He wasn't no reasoning with this man. Because, you know, it was yes, sir, no, sir, and just learn how to roll with this thing. Because he was swinging. I learned early. The best thing to do is keep mouth shut. Act like you're really dying when he's swinging. <laughs> Double up on the tears, baby. <laughs> because he's still going to be coming with it. He don't care. Because he would do stuff like open the window that the neighbors would hear. He got that from the Bible. He says, uh, he said, rebuke the elder openly. That would be my oldest brother. He's the elder. <laughs> that the rest of the house will fear. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me what I'm talking about. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm just trying to tell you that, that, that there comes a place where, 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 where we're promoting this feel-good stuff but not telling people the truth about themselves. It promotes people that are totally against the word of God, against the principles of God. We're, we're finding ourselves right now, we're meeting people, we're talking and having conversations, and we're saying, I never believed that person would believe anything like that. I didn't believe that they would do anything like that. How could they come under this kind of teaching? How could they do that? How could they be a pastor? How could they do this? How could they? And it's called the Antichrist. I don't care if you're a preacher, you're still going to have the spirit of the Antichrist. A title don't get you exempt from this word. Huh? No, 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 no. Either you, either you do what he says or you don't. Huh? Oh, come on here. Come on here. Watch, 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 watch now. The spirit of the Antichrist says abortion ain't no big deal. Just as long as a woman has a right to choose. It's her body. Ain't it amazing? How can the church be in the middle and say nothing? Here's what I'm saying to every believer that thinks like that. Okay, I'm talking to you. Every believer that thinks it's a woman's choice, she can choose. Every woman, the next time you call on God, I want him to stay in the middle and not make a choice concerning your situation. See, if God treated you like you treated him, you're calling on God. Say, God, would you heal me? Would 
Well, I'm taking a stand. By your stripes, I'm healed. I'm taking a stand. Would you take that stand with me? That's your word, God. See, at some points we want the word of God, and other points we don't want the word of God. Well, you know, uh, you know, it's our choice. Uh, it's our choice. Huh? Uh, and also, we love, we got to love everyone. And therefore, we got to condone whatever lifestyle choice they make. You know, it's their life. And they got to choose their life. I know. I know, but God is, see, since God is love, you got to love me. But I ain't got to love your sin. But let's not get it twisted, baby. You, I can love you and hate your sin. I can love you and tell you the truth about your sin. But we got people that, well, you know, I, you, know you, you got to love me. You know, you love everybody else, though. You know, everybody else you let have a pass. You, you know, this is just what I'm going through. And Paul had a thorn in his flesh. Even if it's explicitly against God's word. Because Jesus loves you. And Jesus is love. And therefore, you got to condone what I'm doing even though it's explicitly against the word of God, you get trapped in corners and arguments and debates and you don't know how to stand anymore on the word of God. Hmm? Well, the devil is a lie. It's easy to see that we're living right now in some very per perilous times. The news cycle seems to be on a never-ending loop of exposing this deep political polarization, the moral decadence. I, I mean, if I could just resurrect my dad for just one week, he would want to go right back immediately to understand that this stuff is happening in broad daylight that nobody even cares anymore. What the Bible explicitly says is wrong. People are embracing it, and it's being embraced by the church. There's civil unrest, violence, hatred, and the world is sinking into all of it. In the midst of all this chaos, the temptation to lash out with misguided anger is just, there. We, we, we just want to just do something and then fall into just really hopeless apathy like I, I give up. But let me tell you something. Don't you give up. We can't grow weary in well-doing. Listen, God has put us here for a reason that we might be salt and light. See, if you're driving down a dark road and you decide to turn off your lights, you turning off your lights might cause someone else to die as well because the other fella may have just had a headlight malfunction and he was counting on your lights to stay out of your way y'all didn't hear me <laughs> yeah I know that was better than y'all gave me an amen right there <laughs> see, see sometimes you don't know what the other fella's going through but they looking for some kind of hope a flicker of something that lets me know have you ever been lost Come on, soldiers. Have you ever been lost, huh, in the woods, huh? You know you're on a base. We, we didn't go nowhere. We're on the base, but the base is so many miles, and you are lost. You know you're lost. Know you're lost. You're beating a comfort, trying to get an asthma. They gave you the broke compass some kind of way. You can't figure out no if you don't know where you are. Come on. Am I talking to anybody here? You're reading your map and you can't even find a ridge. You can't find nothing. Can't find a stream. Am I talking to anybody? You're looking for a known spot on the map. How God, I said, forget this stuff. I start looking for lights, y'all. 
I find the town and then I'm going to look at a regular map. Go to go down to the gas station and say, hey, how do I get back to the base? How y'all did hear me? At some point, when you are lost, man, there's light that's going to help you find a way. And Jesus has said, you are the light of the world, but you want to put a bushel on top of your land stand. Oh, God, the Antichrist is moving. And we allow him to move because we don't want to decide on anything. In the midst of all this chaos, the temptation to lash out is there. As a believer, we can't fall into that kind of, in kind of the ditch. We're not warring against flesh and blood. Our enemy is not the extreme left. Our enemy is not the alt-right or any other human entity. Agape, I need for you to hear me. Church, I need you to hear me. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to shine in darkness. We're going to shine in darkness. You got to decide right now, I'm going to let my ever ready shine right now. I got to shine it. Listen, listen, you... You don't hear me what I'm saying. You may not shine as bright as this spotlight or these spots that are on me. But I guarantee you, if you just got a little bit of light in the midst of darkness, it's going to pierce it. Come on. Come on. Light trumps darkness every time. And once you decide that there's power in walking in light, the light will get brighter. Y'all didn't hear me what I'm saying. And there comes a time where we've got to understand that she must learn to identify her true, uh, true enemy and understand that it's not some big monster we might be looking for, that it's the spirit of the Antichrist that's feeding all of this destruction in the midst of the earth. Why are church folk against church folk, people on Twitter saying, why can't we get along? Why can't we seem to get along? Why can't the church get along? Because factions of the church have become antichrist, antichristos, anti-anointing. Oh, let's just call it what it is. Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not pe- preaching hate. I'm preaching the Bible. The Bible says even now the antichrist is among us. So what makes you think? Because you go to a God be the antichrist. Huh? Because you're in the church in Ramstein, there's no. Eh. There are people in church that meet today here in Ramstein and meet today in the Kaiserslautern community. Pastors that have never stood in their pulpit and said homosexuality is against this Bible and we shouldn't do it. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. <laughs> Send your letters and cards and emails. I don't care. I'm just telling you the truth. Next time you call, Jesus saying, I'm going to stand in the middle like you. I'm going to be lukewarm. I ain't got no decision for you. Think about that for a minute. You won't stand for me, but you want me to. See, when you ask me for a promotion, that means somebody else ain't going to get one. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Y'all going to make me decide. How you going to make me decide? How you going to make me to choose you and not choose the other fella? God, you said if my people <laughs> who are called by your name. See, I, 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 I learned that. See, see, because my daddy beat me like he did, I learned how to be reverent to fathers. <laughs> you know, dad, <laughs> you're a good father. See, that, that, may be too, that may be for one day not getting a whooping right there. You're good. I like how good you are. You're just a wonderful dad. And I just see you out there walking, doing all that stuff. How can I help you? <laughs> I had a motivation then not to get beat. <laughs> I had motivation. I had a motivation. I was trying to get in the good graces of God. But I learned something about reverence the Father. God, I want to be on your good side. I, I know, God, that, there, there, that, that, that you, can, you can be the God of the Old Testament, but please don't turn the page right now on me. I need Jesus dealing with me right now. 
Come on, anybody ever said that? God, don't, don't, don't turn the page. Don't do what you did in the Old Testament. Don't strike me dead. Come on here. Because what I did now, yesterday, used to, folks used to die like that. Oh, God, please. Am I talking to anybody? Y'all ain't honest. Y'all ain't honest with yourself. You ain't always been holy. Come on here. You ain't always live right. You better ask God for some crop failure. There's some stuff in your life that you don't want nobody to know about. Ah, God covered it. He covered it. But when you call on him and you don't, what if he act like you act and won't stand for something? I don't know if I can't cover that. I'm just going to stay in the middle and let y'all handle that. <sighs> what good is having a father if you can't run through the door and he protects you? <sighs> when the bully is running after you. See, fathers, you know, they're not like my father. You know, you know fathers back in the day. You run home. Well, see, now they got guns, but uh, we used to run home after a fight. Daddy would put his foot at the door. You better get your butt out there and fight, boy. <laughs> Don't you come up in here. You, you better get BB. You better be bloody up before I bring you up in here. Come on here. But now, come on, they'll just let you run on in there. Mama will always let you in the door now. Oh, mama let you in the door. Mama let you get in there. Come on in here, boy. Don't you? You know, we need to understand that the spirit of the Antichrist is present. Self-proclaimed prophets and misguided theologians have said Nero, perhaps, or even Hitler, the Pope, uh, the Antichrist. Y'all have heard all of these. Antichrist stories. You remember some of y'all old enough in the 80s when I was here, back in the 80s, I was here as a young young officer. I was here in the 80s, a young commander, and there was a, a leader of the Soviet Union named Mikhail Gorbachev. Y'all remember? And Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. He had this birthmark on his head, and everybody thought that that was Revelation 13 and 3. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all, everybody thought he was the Antichrist. And then we got Obama. Then y'all thought he was the Antichrist. Then we got Donald Trump. Now, you know he the Antichrist. Yeah, come on. And everybody talking about the Antichrist. But everybody's ignoring the spirit of Antichrist. Oh, uh, y'all didn't hear me. Since scripture gives us general clues regarding the Antichrist identity, you know, I'm content with leaving it like this. For many understanding eschatology, as long, my understanding of eschatology is this. As long as the Trump, the triumphant church, our church, the church of the living God is here, we're going to hold back the Antichrist. Did you hear me what I'm saying? The Antichrist and I will never meet each other. Because we're going to be gone when he show up. That's my understanding. My understanding is we are the only thing between the Antichrist, lawlessness, lawlessness in the world, the church. We're the only thing. When he takes his church out of here, there ain't going to be no light. Come on here. When I'm, when I'm lifted, come on here. When, when I'm raptured, when I'm going, let me tell you something. I'm not going to be dealing with the Antichrist. I got a dinner engagement. Oh, he said that's a supper that he's going to have. Y'all didn't hear me. I got to get to my, my roof, Chris, in heaven, steakhouse. Y'all didn't hear me. I ain't going to be dealing with no, I'm not dealing with no Antichrist. I'm not telling, I'm not, I'm not ignoring it. What I'm concerned about really more than anything is what I've got to deal with every day is the spirit. Of many antichrists. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2 and 6 and 7. Here's what it says. And it says, and now you know what is restraining. That he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains will do so until he is what? 
taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. I didn't. Y'all bought that in. Y'all bought that in here. I got good news for you. I could care less about who the Antichrist is. Because I will not meet him, see him, because I'm going to be gone. Be out of here. Let's say I, I'm going to let some of you Antichrist deal with him. Deal with your own people. Because I'm going to be gone. Y'all, y'all, oh God, I, 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 I see. That was right in your Bible right there. That's enough right there to make you shout right there. Listen, listen. I, I'm not intending on being here. I, I'm not trying to be here. I'm not trying to be here. On top of that, the church possesses the authority to resist him. We resist the authority. We should not have any fear about who the Antichrist is. Look at 1 John 4 and 4. Here's what it says. You are of God, little children, and have overcome him because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Either you believe that or you don't. Either you are greater than the spirit or the Antichrist himself or you're not. At some point, you got to understand that God has ordained you. He's appointed you to have this kind of strength and have this kind of power. So whether wasting your time guessing who the man is and all of that, I I want you to be concerned about what kind of spirits are operating in the world right now. Man, the spirit of Antichrist is working right now in the day. The good news is the Bible is straightforward. It really is. It gives some clear instructions. You don't have to have a study in numerology. You don't have to have some special conference you're going to go to, some guru to crack, some special code to understand the end time. All you have to simply do is look at the Bible. Let's look at John chapter 1, John chapter 4. Let's look at 2 and 3. It says, by this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. So these agnostics um, that the apostle John was dealing with, he says, listen, they don't believe this stuff. And I've told y'all in the beginning, don't get caught up in it. Preachers today can stand and say, listen here, listen, as we read, come on now, as we read Genesis, remember when we went through Genesis and, and, and Abram and Lot, y'all remember that, y'all remember, remember I preached the message maybe 15 years ago, anybody here, God, I'm talking to somebody on the camera, 15 years ago, I preached the message, don't camp too close to Lot, you remember that? Don't pitch your tent too close to Lot. Man, because when you start pinching your tent close to Sodom and Gomorrah, see, some of us are just right on the edge of sin. Yeah, we, we just like to lay around sin. You know, you know why most people fall out of bed? Because they sleep too close to where they got in. If you just get in the middle of the bed, you got a less better chance. You lessen your chance of falling out. Uh, yeah, some of y'all come to Christ and you stay on the edge. You never come in. Yeah, you want to keep a little sip on the side. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, no, 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 please, please, I'm not a religious man. I didn't tell you don't drink. I don't tell nobody in here don't drink. I tell me don't drink because I used to be an alcoholic. I'm delivered. I used to be an alcoholic. I don't drink. I just don't drink liquor. I don't drink wine. I don't drink nothing. Don't drink. But there used to be a time where I'd get up and drink. So I had to decide what I was going to do. This is me. I said, God, I, I need total deliverance. I used to, I used to run five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten miles. Ah. Y'all remember when the, when the commander was said, if you got him? <laughs> I put my cigarette right up about my sock and start smoking after I ran him ten miles, man. Now, when I quit... I can't even stand up. And my wife would tell you, if I check into a hotel room and got smoke in, I said, take, take me out of here. You've been with me too many times. Mm-mm, no, 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 no. I paid too much money. Uh-uh, I'm the favorite customer. Get me, clean, bring me somebody to clean this room. In it, anti, people who used to smoke and you, we're the worst, aren't we? We're the worst. Don't, don't, come on. Ooh, Jesus, come on, you're right. Yes, sir, yeah. That's where it should be about sin, man. When you used to be in sin and you're away from sin, sin ought to give you the willies, man. Sin ought to give you the willies. 
Y'all ain't talking back to me. At some point, we need to understand that light can't stand darkness. Scripture calls the devil the adversary. And the etymology of the word refers to one who turns or becomes antagonistic toward another. This is an important reminder that Satan's activities, uh, Lucifer was always against Satan. I mean, always against God. He was against God. He was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be like God, and he then became the adversary to God. Do y'all understand the relationship between Satan, between Lucifer and God? See, I think if saints understood that relationship, our activity before this message would be different. What am I saying? Lucifer was in charge of... Uh, he was the covered cherubim. His pipes were, he could sing. He, that's why so much hell's in choir and music. That's why every manner of sin is in music, homosexuality, and all of this stuff. You know, it seems like, does it, do, you, do you have to be homosexual to play a piano? That's what it seems in some churches. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. But Satan, watch now, Satan was in charge of that. And here's my question to saints. The Bible says that Satan was removed from heaven. That's what Ezekiel says, right? Said he was removed from heaven. He was the covered cherubim. In other words, he was the favorite cherubim. He was kicked from heaven. What was his job title? Praise and worship leader. My question is, should God miss Satan because you don't praise him? Should God miss Satan because you won't come in here and open up your big mouth and give him glory? Huh? God gave you a blessing. God gave you an ability. I'm always on my daughter. God gave you an anointed to sing, and I die. It irks me that you sit on that gift. How can you sit on a gift that God gave you? Should God miss Satan? Because you sitting on your hands. Y'all didn't hear me. And one third of the angels went with him. That's why it says you are a God of little children. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Because he that in the world only has Satan and one third of the host of angels. Even a child, I can go back over to children's church and find out that two-thirds is greater than one-third. That means we got two-thirds of the host of heaven on our side. Do you know when I call on war and try to get stuff through the second heaven, that's where the devil is operating and God is in the third heaven. I know one thing, that when God answers the prayer at the same hour, he said, the prince of Persia withstood me. There's got to be a fight in the heavenlies and we don't know how to command angels to move on our behalf. I'm talking to somebody in here that understands the power and the authority of the believer. Glory to your name, Jesus. He is anti-Christ, anti-Christos. His ultimate goal is not to oppose, to oppose your political view. He don't care nothing about that. Your moral code, he don't care nothing about that either. Or your sexual practices. He's not against that. The only thing that the antichrist is against is Christ himself. And the word of God. And if I, if the Antichrist can get you to compromise on the word of God, checkmate. If I can get you on one thing, I'm going to get you on another thing. Checkmate. When you don't understand the word, you better be, you just, I, I believe what the word says. What do what the word say about that? Well, see, man, that don't make no sense. Now, you know, there's a loving God now. You know, a loving God, you know, a loving God should let two Considering adults love who they want to. He may he male and female. A man who should be able to choose what sex he wants to choose. See, you, you're missing what you're agreeing to. You're not agreeing to sexuality. 
you're agreeing that there is another God beside Jehovah. So, so if you come to me and you say it's okay for your son um, to get mutilated. Oh, and it's happening now. Y'all saw that case in Texas? Twins, eight years old. Father crying because he don't want his son. Both of my boys. Mama got one of the sons. And the court gave him, gave her custody. And he wants to be a girl. And mama wants him to be a girl. At eight years old, think about it, think about it. If you leave your eight-year-old at home and let him fix gummy bears for lunch, breakfast and dinner all week long, because they don't want to eat your food. They get so sick. The doctor sees them at church, I mean at school. They come to you and say, hey, what have you been eating, lad? Oh, I eat gummy bears. I eat yellows and the greens and the blues. Excuse me, this is a joke. What are you eating? What did you eat for breakfast this moment? Same thing I ate last yesterday, gummies. Bring me what you're talking about. Maybe you don't understand what I'm asking you. He brings a little plastic bag. I eat this bag for breakfast. <laughs> what do you think they're going to come do with, about you? They're going to take that kid from you because he is malnourished, but we're going to allow him to cut his genitals off? Are are y'all really having this conversation with me? Are y'all in this room with me? Anybody see how crazy this sounds? That is the spirit of the Antichrist. It has nothing to do with sexuality. It's anything that will be against God. That is the spirit of Antichrist. By now you know the spirit. You know it. Every spirit that confesses Christ, hmm, that is God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus has come in the flesh. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. I want to make one more point. And then we're going to stop and we're going to get into part two on next time. The essence of the gospel is that the eternal son of God became man. He paid for our sins with his blood. He was crucified. He was buried. And he rose again on the third day. And he sits at the right hand of the father. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is 100% God, and yet he was 100% man. Unless whatever it is you're coming up against lines up with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you better run. You better run. I think we'll stop right there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want you all to read that, but I'm just going to read verse 21. It says, for since by man came death, and by also came the resurrection of the dead. And there is one God, 1 Timothy said, one mediator between God and man. And that man, Jesus Christ, I want you, as we prepare for next week, to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm telling you right now, if you don't have a good understanding of 1 Corinthians 15, you will get hoodwinked, bamboozled, and tricked every time about this spirit of the Antichrist. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. I mean, you know, you got people that are, you know what the spirit does? It, It exalts people. Huh? It exalts people. We, we, we go to the television, we go to our fervent shows, we go to internet to get advice from people. 
I cannot believe it. You got stupid women calling Steve Harvey for marriage advice. Are you kidding me? Are you really kidding me? Are you really serious? Really? I mean, if you go to a counselor and the counselor says, well, try on the shoes before you buy them, you need to run. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. Huh? What do you mean that's the spirit of the Antichrist? Because sex before marriage is against God. Oh, Y'all ain't with me. See, 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 you too stuffy, Bishop. No, I'm not stuffy. I'm talking about the word of faith. We get counsel, and then we want to know why our stuff don't work. Huh? I guarantee you, you go to the base financial counselor if you want to. You go to the base financial counselor, and they're going to tell you once you, they see your budget, and they say, what are you giving 10% to the church for? But that's, at that point, should be your signal. Excuse me, appointment's over. Bye. Because they're getting ready to get you in more financial trouble than you can shake a stick at. Y'all didn't hear me what I'm saying. Should a man rob God? I'm not about ready to rob God. The favor in which we received this year is enough to let everybody know that God is in the favor business. There's no way in the world this ceiling's supposed to be up in here without us releasing 35,000, at least 30,000 euros. But we didn't release it. Two angels came from the Ukraine. Two angels from the Ukraine. Y'all didn't hear me. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. Two angels came from the Ukraine. Y'all didn't hear me what I'm saying. And we pray. I couldn't even speak to them in their own language. But every, every lunch and dinner, we prayed in the spirit together. Y'all didn't hear me. Oh, glory to your name. Glory to his name. Let me, let me just tell you, no, no, ain't no way in the world. Huh? Look, at the, look around the church. Look at the church. Huh? More people looking online than in here. Huh? How we, are how we playing the bills? How are we taking care of these 312 kids uh, in Africa, in Liberia, in, Sh in Sri Lanka, in India? How is all of that happening? How are we doing that? How are we doing it? Huh? Huh? Could it be by what you're giving? You're giving so much, you're handling all of this? No, God's favor is with us because we are givers and tithers. And let's, let me just close by saying this. I want you all to please go into your Bible, look. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 uh, tonight, today, tomorrow. I need for you to do that. And I want you to, let me just read one last scripture and we're going to close right here. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. It says, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, hiding his true identity behind strategies and crafty mass of deception. He, he, it, that's what he's going to do. He's going to masquerade. And we're going to talk about the faces that he's going to masquerade in next week. One of them is radical secularism. God is, is going to get us to see that what is happening to the culture is sexual sec, secularism is, is taking over and we need to, 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 to stand up, you know, and say, no, we, we're not going to let you get away with it. And that's going to be the next thing that we're going to get on when we come back. We're going to talk about uh, how we're going to blunt uh, the devil's uh, work in that area, that we're going to be salt and light and going to make a difference. Hey, listen, those of you all who are watching online, I want to say to you, God bless you. I thank you so much for being with us on today. Listen, you're there online, and I want you to be a part of what it is that we're doing here at Agape. Listen, we are a Bible-believing church that we believe that all of God's people ought to worship together, every race, every tribe, and every tongue. Therefore, you know, not only are we a church that believes that here locally, but we take the gospel uh, to the world, and we really need your support. As we draw toward the end of the uh, end of the year, we've got two projects that we've got to get done uh, in the month of December. One is we've got to be giving a generous gift to the Crisis Pregnancy Center. I sit on the board there, and so does uh, Elder Cody. We sit on the board of the Crisis Pregnancy Center. We're there to help young mothers not to abort their children. We have uh, an aid center to be able to provide uh, needs for children clear up to the age of three years old 
and, and we want to be able to continue that work. And, you know, as it goes, as the uh, churches have been in COVID, offerings have gone down. So as our budget uh, decreased somewhat this year, but we need to be giving a significant donation. And I asked you all to help us. And if you would to, to do that, you could just uh, put that, put that uh, donation uh, give it to us in any form you would like to online. You can go online. You can use your debit card however you want to do it. If you want to give to our missions operation, you can just hit the PayPal button at www.agapecfc.org and do it that way. But listen, if you're not uh, a part of any church, if you're part of a church, we're not asking you to tithe at our church because your tithe belongs to the church you go to. And I understand that there's been a shift because I can tell by the number of people that look at us every week, almost 2,000 a week that watch this broadcast. And I know, obviously, there's not 2,000 partners of our church, but I thank you so much. If you find this place as a place that you're being fed and that you're learning the things of God. We ask that you would support us, at least in our missions work. And if you want a place to deposit your tithes, we are doing great work in the kingdom of God. We'd be so happy to do that. Listen, if you're there listening to me, you don't know Jesus as Lord of your life, as well as here in the room, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Uh, with every head bowed and every eye closed, you there at home, wherever you are, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are saved. And, and we believe that it doesn't take nothing but a confession and a belief in a heart to, to, to grab hold to your salvation. Listen, I want you to write us, email us right there right now, and we'll tell you what your next step is. Listen, we love you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And to next time we see you, be blessed in the Lord. Saints of God, I, I want to say.